Adrian Broner, infamous or misunderstood, a great talent or a guy who could still go down as a great champion. I remember speaking to you last year. Question was, have you gotten enough out of your talent? That was a year ago. Are you close to your talent yet? No. There's so much more to come. So much more to come. How much have you tapped him? 50, 60, 70%? Uh, honestly, <laughs> I'll say 45 to 50. You're fighting half speed this whole time? Yeah. Going half speed made you this rich and famous. Yeah. You've been around a lot of death. You've seen a lot. Yeah. Care to remember for me? I remember, but I, I try to forget. You know, I found out the hard way. And I've seen that I got to I gotta maneuver different, and that's why I maneuver different. I try to put as many positive people in front of me as possible. You know, when you, when you get as big as Adrian Broner, become a celebrity, become famous, become wealthy enough to take care of a team, a family, and then you're around so much negativity, it's only going to come a point in time where you're going to do negative things as well. You know, that's what I've been going through. And, but, but right now, you know, I'm, you know, it's about keeping people around me that's positive and, and keep me in a positive output mindset. But part of the reason you made it is because you have a persona. So Every, people, everybody say it's a persona. It's really not a persona. You know, that was just me. About billions? That was just me. That was just it me. It sells pretty well. I was just me and myself. People do want to see it. And, and some people want to see you get beat. That's cool. That's cool. Sometimes I think that the shot that hit you was fame being famous. Yeah, you can say that when I was younger. Sometimes you want fame and it comes and it, it'll kick your ass. You know, I gotta give a, a, um, a big shout out to my uncle, Andrew Williams. One day when fame and the money first start coming and I start getting in trouble, a lot. And he, <laughs> he came to my house and he's like, uh, I had my boys over. He's like, first he screamed at them. He told them he'd kick all their ass if he got to. Then he said he'd kick my ass if he got to. And then he looked at me and he started laughing. I, what? So I'm, I'm getting you. And he was like, you scared. I'm like, what? What you talking about? You ain't even got no money yet. You scared to get the money. You gonna fuck up before you even get some money. And they had just gave me some good money, but... He was right. You know, uh, I never was he, got did it. Did he have a point? Yeah, but I never got it until, like, you know, not too long ago. Let me ask you about this year. Been a tough year for you. You did 30 days for contempt. What was that like? You know, I did, I did a year in that place fighting a case. As a juvenile? No, they tried me as an adult. I was only 17 at the time. They tried me as an adult. I missed the Olympic trials. Boom. I beat it. I get out and I become Adrian Broner. Mm -hmm. my, whole, my lifestyle is totally different. And then one day I wake up back in the same place. I was in one of the same rooms I was in when I did the year. Mm -hmm. What'd you tell yourself? I made it the best that I can make it. But you know, when I was in there, I was by my, I used to be by myself. I used to try to try to be by myself as much as possible. But you know, I told them to put me in general population because they wanted to put me in protective custody. I'm like, no, I, I can't do thirty days like that. You insisted on being in general population. Yeah, of course. I I know everybody. You know, I just made it a better place for me. You know, with people with no money on a on a on a book, so I I, I I put money on people's books. So I helped the whole unit. It's about it was a big room, about as big as this gym. Um, held about 80 because it was two to a room. And, you know, uh, I, I just made it a better place at the time, you know? If somebody needs something to eat, I give them something to eat, you know? I could only spend 75, 80, like $85 a week. Mm -hmm. I like spending money. You know, I, 
you know, working is hard. You know, you got to go out and, and spend something. <laughs> I like spending money and then come to, I, I could only spend 85 a week. Damn, yeah, but you were locked up, man. That's what I'm saying. It was, it was, it was you should be beyond that, no? Didn't you tell yourself, I, I should be done with this place? I told myself that. After that 30 days, it was like, it's over. It's time to change everything. And then I go in there, and it was the same CEO. Correction officer. Yeah. That told me, you, you're not going to be this. Because I used to always tell them all the time, I'm going to be a world champion. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be a world champion. He's like, man, you're not going to be nothing. And he seen me, and he was like, uh, Wow, you did it. But what the fuck are you doing back, back in here? And what did you tell him? At the time, I was a little messed up. I couldn't really talk. But I remember his words, and he gave me another bag lunch and another juice. And I did my bid. After you got out yeah. last October, you put up this Instagram post with a gun. People talked about it like, oh, it's a suicide note. So I ask you all respect, what happened? You know, you got days when some days you, you just feeling good. Mm -hmm. Then you got some days where you just feel like, you know, the worst ever. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it was. more feeling unappreciated, you know? Cause I'm, cause I'll give my last to anybody. And, you know, I was just feeling unappreciated. And, you know, I'm just glad that God got me out of that mind state and I'm, uh, I'm back on a more positive path. Beautiful wife, beautiful kids, a lot of money. What the hell was making you so sad, man? Hmm. Money don't make you happy, man. Money don't cause happiness. You can I didn't had a million dollars in one place. Money, money don't make you happy. Cash, just, just right there. Money don't, money, happiness is, is, is from the heart, man, you know? So it's, it wasn't about the money. Fame can be like an American disease. It can swallow you up whole. Mm -hmm. Only if you let it. You've come close to letting it. But I'm still here. Are oh, you still here? Who saves Adrian Broner? Adrian Broner. Only one who can. I'm in a situation only I can save myself. It's kind of crazy, but it's the truth. What does this fight represent for you? The start of my legacy, you know. And I could have picked somebody who I could have easily demolished, you know, but that's not what I want. And everybody, everybody who was out there, they looking at my opponent like, who is this guy? We don't even know his name. What can you tell me about Granados, the fighter? World-class fighter. He's one of the most underrated mm -hmm. welterweights out there. And if you're not on your A game, you can easily lose to Granados any day. You know, uh, I know personally. Because every day I was in the ring with him, he, he brung it. You know, and um, it was a couple of days where it was rough, but you know what, it, this is boxing. You said at 140 pounds, thereabout, he's never felt anyone hit harder, correct? Mm, we shall see. <laughs> he also said he blooded you a couple of times, backed you up a couple of times, true? Yeah. He's tough. He's tough as nails. What's the ultimate goal here? To try to be the best Adrian Browner I can be. Point blank period. I ain't trying to outdo this person. I ain't trying to outdo that person. If I do, then so be it. But at the end of the day, if I can go to sleep and retire from boxing, knowing that I was the best Adrian Browner that I can be, then I met my goal. I never heard you say that before. It was always about I'm gonna be the next this or the future that or I'm gonna own the sport or but but, you know, you, you talk to a young-minded Adrian mm -hmm. Broner. This Adrian Broner, you know, uh, more mature. Uh, I have mo uh, more understanding about myself. It's really about you telling yourself, I got what I should have gotten out of my talent, is it not? 
Mm. Yes. And, you know, um, a lot of people never understood it. Even my Uncle Drew, we had, you don't know how many talks we done had in cars, breakfast, dinner, lunch, wherever, gym, whatever. He'll talk to me for two hours straight. And I just, I just won't, I won't say nothing. He just keep talking. Talk, 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 talk. Listen, man, look, it's time to change, man. When are you gonna change? And then I look him in his eyes and I'll be like, whenever I'm ready. You ready? Yeah, now. But that was then though, I was young. Shit. All right, ready. Thank you, man. We appreciate Thank you. it. Good luck to you. Thank you.